Hey everybody, I'm Joshua. And I'm Caleb. And we are brothers. Mm. Shocker, we only say it every episode. <laughs> Guys, have you ever looked at the church today? The mm. church has a fantastic desire, and that is a desire to be relevant with mm. society. Yeah. We want to be able to present a message that is listened to and accepted, but sometimes in the pursuit of relevance, mm. we find ourselves potentially mm. finding gray areas within parts of the mission and ministry that maybe we shouldn't. And one day we kind of look around mm. us and we're more like the world than when we started in that attempt. It's like the word compromise pops up. And you see that even today in the news, uh, a mainline Christian denomination going through a schism, the question of compromise. Should we follow God's standards? Should we follow the world's standards? James 1, 8 says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You can't follow the world's standards and God's standards at the same time. So in the church, what do you do? We have become more PC, more accepting of things. Um, let me give you a really good example. Ooh. Say if I own my own restaurant business, or let's, let's say it's a fast food chain, and I call this fast food chain Jesus Chicken. Hmm? Jesus Chicken? Josh, Josh, hmm? Josh, Jesus chicken. Okay, Jesus chicken, my business of Jesus chicken, I self proclaim it for everyone to know it's a family oriented business. We follow Christian ideals and uh, values. We're closed on Sunday and we give donations to Bible based charitable causes. But somewhere along the line, there's some people who rise up, they don't like our Jesus chicken. They complain, even though they've never tasted our chicken, so that the causes that we're giving to these Bible-based causes are angry, hateful, uh, hate crime, you know, bigoted causes. And what should we do? They should try the chicken. Should, should we follow after the world and try no. and make friends with everybody, sing no. kumbaya? I got a verse for that. Okay. James 4.4 4 says, mm. Do you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. That sounds bad. So when the world pressures you to give in to their ideals, what should we do? Don't give up mm -hmm. according to what the scriptures taught you. Ephesians 6, 13 says, having done all to stand, stand, stand on those principles. And uh, John 15, 18 through 19, Yeshua warned us, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world will love its own. Is that not true? Guys, you can't, you can't try to be loved by the world. It's just not going to happen. No. Okay. You can't follow the Messiah and do that. That's and, right. and this was evidenced back mm. with Abraham in Hebrews 11, because he had to recognize that he wasn't from here. He was a stranger. He was from a far off land. And he was looking for a city whose builder and maker is God, always keeping his eyes to the eternal. Is that not the case? That's exactly the case. So when the world is pressuring us to compromise and you see the church falling into that PC habit, why are they doing that? Maybe it's because of fear of over timidity. Maybe it's fear that they're going to be left out, that the world is having more fun. And maybe it's negligence and not understanding the, world of God, the word of God enough that the church thinks it's okay what they're doing, the sin that they're doing. And these are all mistakes and pitfalls that the church can fall into. Romans 8, 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but mm. to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's because right. the carnal mind is enmity against God. Mm. And for it not to subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Mm. Romans 6, 1 through 2, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. Certainly mm. not. Mm. You can't give a spoiler. How shall we, we who died in sin live any longer in it? That's right. Uh, there seems to be that conflict, our love of the world versus our love of holiness. What's going to win out? We know that we can be tempted by the world. We know that that's always going to be there. Uh, but we need to be eternally minded like Abraham. We need to realize this is all temporal, that all the fun and the pleasures of this will lead to suffering if we continue therein. Sins lead to to pain, to punishment, to judgment. Uh, even with a forgiving God, we still suffer the consequences of that. And so though we try to kind of dabble in sin sometimes, and like you've said before, Josh, kind of inch the line of this little sin is okay, and this little sin is okay, and this little sin, before you know it, you're gonna be trapped in the whole thing, aren't you? 
Don't get trapped in the whole thing. Mm. Eat the Jesus chicken. It's delicious. I just did. <laughs> and remember, guys, it is not any of your methodology that will bring anyone mm. to the saving grace of Yeshua. That's it's right. only his mm. anointing. So live in that holiness. Practice what the Word says and be an example for what's right. That's right. And Psalm 119, 1 through 3, to conclude, Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instruction of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey His laws and search for Him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil, and they walk only in His paths. Thank you for watching. Eat the chicken. It's so good. I'm not compromising, Josh. It's a chicken. Oh, it smells bad. It's in the freezer. It's very cold. Ugh.